the 125 is not running too hot. Let's pull it in the shop and figure out what's up with it. All right, first off, I'm gonna run through the most common and simplest issues that lead to a bike not wanting to rev out. So first off, I have to get it out of the way. Make sure you've got enough fuel in the tank. And on a two stroke, check your mixture ratio. If you're running it too rich, that could cause it to not want to rev out. I run my mixture at 32 to one. Next up, especially on a two stroke, replace your spark plug. And then a dirty or over oiled air filter will restrict airflow and cause it to cut out at high RPM. A couple more simple things to check over that could cause the bike to not want to rev out would be a plugged up petcock valve here on the gas tank. So I'll pull it apart, make sure it's all clear. And then up on top here on the cap, if the vent is plugged up, that could restrict airflow or fuel flow and uh, cause the same issue. And then it's pretty common on two strokes, a cracked or chipped reed, that could do it too. So you have to pull off the carburetor, slide out the reed cage and inspect each reed. So if you're gonna be pulling the carburetor off the bike, I would definitely recommend splitting it apart and doing some cleaning. A plugged up main jet would definitely cause some issues. And a few other things to look over as well would be plugged up vents or vent hoses, a misadjusted fuel screw, or if the carburetor needs to be rejetted really bad, that'll cause it to not want to rev out too. Another thing to consider around the carburetor and intake area would be air leaks. So look around the joint between the air boot and air box, fitting between the air boot and carburetor, also between the carburetor and intake manifold, and around the reed cage as well. So if you spray starting fluid around all those connections and joints with the engine running and the idle goes up slightly, that means you have an air leak somewhere. Oh, and one more thing to check out on the carburetor. Make sure the choke is operating properly. A choke that is sticky could definitely be a culprit. One more simple thing to check out before we get into the serious stuff. A plugged up exhaust system is definitely a possibility too. The most likely scenario would be a silencer that has packing that's just soaked in oil. So worth pulling that apart to check out. And this scenario isn't very likely, but it's worth mentioning. So if you had your bike sitting for a while, there could be a nest or bird inside the expansion chamber. I've seen it happen before, so definitely worth checking into. And if you've been through all that and you still haven't solved the issue yet, I would start digging into the electrical components. So if you have an ohm meter and a service manual, You'll be able to test the stator, which is underneath the flywheel cover here, and the ignition coil, which is usually tucked up inside the frame on most bikes. Unfortunately, the CDI box is something that cannot be tested. And then if your bike has an exhaust valve like this one does, I would check into that next. A misadjusted, sticky, or dirty exhaust valve will definitely be the cause of some issues. The last two things we're gonna check out are somewhat in depth. You'll have to tear into the motor a bit, so a worn top end, meaning low compression, is something to look for. And that would be worn out piston, worn rings, or a damaged cylinder. And then a leaking crank seal would be the last thing I would dig into. On the left side here, you'll have to remove the flywheel cover, the flywheel and stator, and then you'll be able to get a glimpse at that crank seal. And then over on the right side, this is a little more in depth. You have to pull off, let's see here, water pump cover, both the outer and inner clutch covers, possibly a few gears inside, and then uh, you should be able to uh, check out that crank seal. So the majority of this info was directed towards a two-stroke, but you could apply most of it to a four-stroke as well. And then if you have a fuel-injected four-stroke, there's a whole host of other things you could check over. That could include fuel pump, fuel filter, throttle body, injector, condenser, regulator, let's see what else. Yeah, there's a whole host, a whole lot of other things you could look over. So I think I've ran through pretty much every possible scenario. And now I'm gonna figure out what's up with this bike. Hopefully I don't have to tear into it too much. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is the fuel. And make sure there's actually gas in the tank. Pretty obvious deal. Yep, tank is full. And I know I just mixed that fuel at 32 to one. So that is not the issue. The next thing I'm going to check out would be the spark plug. I'm just going to go ahead and replace this one. So the spark plug looks fairly normal. It doesn't look like it's majorly fouled out or anything. 
I mean, there's definitely oil on it, but I don't see a reason why that would be the issue. But I'm just going to go ahead and replace it anyways. By the way, you can pick up these two stoke stickers over at PrimeMX.com. Alright, I'm going to fire it up and see if the spark plug did the trick. Well, it was that simple. She's all good to go now. It's funny, it's actually happened to me before on this 125 and several other bikes as well. So spark plugs are just like any other part. They wear out too. Kind of a bummer though. I wanted to tear more into this bike and give you guys some great content. But for my sake, good thing it was an easy fix. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up the video. If you'd like to support the channel and add some flavor to your bikes or your truck, pick up some stickers over at PrimeMX.com. Thanks for watching everyone.